the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week on the Netcast. We're going to be continuing with our study from Mark chapter 4. And I've got my uh, tablet here with me. This is a tablet computer. And I've got Condre Bible, which is uh, the Bible that I use on the tablet. And that way I can read it and we can get into our study. And and I don't have to constantly be looking over at the PC, which will help me uh, kind of stay focused (laughs) on helping you with the Word of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So that's a good thing. So I'm glad we got our tablet here. Uh, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 4. While you're doing that, let me remind you that Word of Faith Radio is preaching the uncompromised Word of Faith 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And right now, you've got a very special opportunity that I want you to seriously pray about And that is, pray about helping Word of Faith Radio with a very special need. You know, the Word of God says that that, uh, God will supply all our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4.19. And I'm telling you, this is a need that God can use you to help supply for Word of Faith Radio. We need some new equipment. Our equipment is in need of replacement Uh, with Word of Faith Radio, and as technical director, I'm telling you, it would help us tremendously to be consistent and be up all the time. As I said, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We've been doing it for years now, and it's time to replace some of the older equipment. So if you can uh, pray about that, and, and the Lord speaks to you about that, I would encourage you to do that. And then go to the Word of Faith Radio website, WFR. Dot .org I'll put it here on the screen. Go to the website. There's a link over on the right-hand side and that link is a donate button. If you will click that donate button, you can donate using your credit card to Word of Faith Radio and that will be a tremendous blessing to help out the ministry of Word of Faith Radio. Amen. All right, let's get into the word of God for Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 Uh, We're going to begin in verse 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? Now the word comparison here is parabole, which is where we get the word parable. It is a word that means parable. So what parable is the kingdom of God like? It is like unto the parable that we are reading right here from Mark chapter 4. That is the parable of the sower. The sower sows the word. The word of God is sown in your heart. The word of God is the seed. You remember we talked about this before? The word of God is the seed. The human heart is the spirit. The method of planting is the hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And every one of the folks in this parable that Jesus talked about, they all heard the word. They all heard the same word that everyone else heard, but it's what they did with it that made the difference. You remember we also talked about the children of Israel, how they did not profit or benefit from the Word of God because they didn't mix faith with it. You got to hear the Word, but then you got to mix faith with it for it to come to pass in your life. All right, let's uh, begin, uh, continue here in verse 31. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it's sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Now the thing about it is he used a mustard seed as an example. He could have used any seed, but the thing about a mustard seed is it's tiny, it's small. It's not the size of the seed that makes the difference. They were familiar with mustard seeds. It was something that grew very commonly in their area. They knew about mustard seeds. Don't get hung up on the mustard seed. There's a lot of people that wear these little mustard seeds around their neck. You know, well, praise the Lord, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, don't get hung up on it being a mustard seed. 
just the fact that it's a seed, the fact that you plant it, the fact that when you plant it, properly uh, uh, grown soil or, or soil that is properly prepared and it is nourished and it is watered, it will grow. It has within it the potential to grow into a mustard plant. Okay, that mustard seed. It has potential. You know what potential really is? Potential means it can be something. It can develop into something, but it's not that yet. Okay? The Word of God has the potential to change your life dramatically, drastically. But it won't unless you plant the Word of God in your heart by hearing it and then nourish it with your faith. Apply your faith like you would apply water, the, the watering of the Word, the watering of the Word of God in your life is believing it, standing on it, and operating on it in faith. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. You have to act on your faith. You don't just talk about it. You act on it, praise the Lord. All right, it's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it's sown in the earth, it is less or smaller than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it's grown, it groweth up and becometh greater or larger than all the other herbs and shooteth forth great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. In other words, it can actually become shade for birds. It gets that big. Well, it can be that big in your life. It potentially can change your life. Remember, it has potential. But potential is released through development, through believing God, through faith in His Word, and operating on that Word. Let's keep going. Uh, verse 34, But without a parable spake... Uh, oh, let me back up. I, I skipped down just a little too far. Verse 33, And with many such parables spake He the Word unto them, the Word unto them, as they were able to hear it. I want you to think about that. Jesus could have preached the word day in, day, day and night. They could have been exposed to it, but they were able to hear it. Now, what does that mean, able to hear it? They needed to pay attention to it. They needed to focus on it. They needed to actively participate in hearing the word. It's not enough just to have it go in your ear. You could be playing the Word all day long if you didn't pay any attention to it, you didn't focus on it, you didn't really get into the Word of God in depth, it's not going to benefit you like it would if you truly participated in the Word. There's a lot of people that are these days that are denying the need for studying the Word of God. They're denying the need to pay attention to the Word of God. Oh, my, my, my. That... How wrong can you be? This says, as you hear it, as you measure your time, as you measure your effort and energy and your uh, attention to the Word of God, that's how the revelation knowledge will be doled back, so to speak, to you. A lot of people say, oh, I just rely on the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost is the teacher of the church. Praise the Lord. That's great. But the Holy Ghost teaches you through the Word of God. You've got to have the combination of the Word and of the Spirit. You have to have both. You can't just leave one and say, I'll only do the other. No, that's, that's not proper balance. I know that word balance. People don't like to hear the word balance. They think it means compromise. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about staying balanced between the things of the Spirit and the things of the Word and letting them blend together into a whole that is beneficial and will be uh, profitable to you. Praise God. All right, let's keep going. With many such parables spake ye the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, talking about the disciples here, when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. The word expounded here is epeloo, epeloo in the Greek. It means to solve further, to explain, to expound upon. 
he explained it to them in great detail. So they had the benefit of not only hearing the word directly from Jesus, but then he explained it to them in great detail. But now notice what happens here. He expounds all this to his disciples, and the same day, now notice, it's the same day. The same day when the even was come, he said, let us pass over to the other side. Now, I don't know about you, but in my Bible, those words are in red. <laughs> I, I like what Brother Copeland says sometimes, words in red win. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. Now, what does that make it? That makes it the word of the Lord. Those disciples heard the word of the Lord, let us pass over to the other side. But what happened? And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. Jesus went to sleep. He said, let's go to the other side. And then he went to sleep. He's not concerned. He's not worried. He's not thinking, oh, woe is me, will I get to the other side? No, he said, we're going to the other side. He, he was going to the other side. I like what I heard one preacher said, he's going to go to the other side if he had to walk. <laughs> Amen. Well, he told him, let's go to the other side. Then the storm arises, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. They awake him. Now, can you imagine these disciples going and shaking Jesus, waking him up and saying, oh, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? Now, let me tell you this. I heard Brother Copeland say this recently, and it just stuck with me. Whatever you do, don't go to Jesus and say, Don't you care? How dare you say something like that? Think about what you're saying. This is Jesus. Jesus who laid down his life. Jesus who went to the cross. Jesus that bore the, the, the sicknesses of the whole world, the, the, the scourging that he took upon his back, all the things that he did for you, and you say, do you care? Oh my goodness. He absolutely cares greatly for you, and that's why he did what he did. But now... He's no longer been scour being scourged. He's no longer in pain. He's no longer bearing all those things. No, now he's been raised from the dead, is seated at the right hand of the Father on high, and now he's making intercession for us. Oh, he cares, but he knows that care doesn't get the job done. What gets the job done is faith in the Word of God. So they came to Jesus and said, Don't you care? We're going to perish. Well, Jesus didn't say, let's go out and perish. He said, go to the other side. That was his intent, not perishing. So he arose, he rebuked the wind, he said unto the sea, now notice, he talked to the sea. He talked to the circumstance. He talked to, to the problem that was in the way. He talked unto it and said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he turns to the disciples, and what does he say? Does he say, well, now, boys... Good thing you called me because I'm the only one that could have handled this. I'm the only one that could have talked to the sea. Oh my goodness, it's sure a good thing you woke me up in time. Did he say that? <laughs> no, that's not what he said. He rebuked the wind and the sea. There was a great calm and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, Jesus just got through preaching to them the same day. He got through not only preaching the, all the message that we've covered over the last two or so netcast, but he did it in such a way that he afterward expounded in great detail unto them everything that he was trying to get across to them. And now they're saying, don't you care that we're going to perish? No. He said, go to the other side. He had put his word out there and he intended that they go to the other side. That was the word of the Lord they had, and they should have put their faith in it. And that's why he says, why is it that you have no faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Well, he spoke the word of the Lord to go to the other side. And they feared, oh my goodness, they feared. They not only weren't in faith, they were in fear. Fear is the reciprocal of faith, the exact opposite. They feared exceedingly and said unto each other, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? They missed it. 
They missed it entirely because they could have said to the sea, the Lord Jesus Christ said, go to the other side. We're going to go to the other side. Peace, be still. Now, don't you think he'd have had a whole different approach to them after he woke up and saw they were, they were at the other side and they said, Lord, we, we rebuked the wind and it calmed down so we could get to the other side. Don't you think he would have marveled at their faith instead of marveling at their unbelief? See, that's what we need to do. We need to have faith in his word. We need to... <laughs> I clicked the button there when I hit it. We need to have faith in the word of God. The word contains the power within itself to cause itself to come to pass. The word is full of potential. You know, in physics, they talk about potential energy. Potential energy has to be released. Well, the word of God contains potential for your life, but it has to be released. It has to be heard. It has to go into your spirit. You have to speak out of your spirit. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Once you get the faith down in your heart, it comes out through the speaking of words, speaking words out of your mouth. And when you speak what God has spoken, when you speak the word of God, then you will see things begin to happen in your life. You will see changes begin to come in your life because you are acting on the Word of God. Did you get that? I trust you're getting this because you need to understand that the power of the Word of God is only potential until you release it. If you don't get anything out of what we're talking about here today, then this... This will hold you in good stead. And that is, the Word of God has the potential to change your life, but only if you hear it, get it in your spirit, speak it out of your mouth, act on it, apply or release the potential that is in the Word of God in your life. If you'll do that, it will be of tremendous benefit to you. If you don't do it, you won't have the benefit. You won't release the potential. That's the key. And that's why the Word of God is so important. No matter what people are teaching, no matter what people are saying these days, the Bible is important. It is profitable unto you. It's profitable for instruction. It's profitable for reproof. It's profitable for correction. It's profitable in every area of your life. You say, well, Dr. Bill, I don't know about... Well, let me just read you. I just was quoting it, but it's not, uh, it's not enough to quote it. We, we need to actually read it. We need to get back to the Scripture and really have a dedication to the Word of God. All right, let's read it from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's breathed out of God's own mouth and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished into all good works. That's the power of the Scripture. That's the potential of the Word of God. Notice it says the Scripture. There's a lot of people teaching these days that the Bible isn't the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God, and so if we get Jesus in our heart, we don't need the Bible anymore. Oh, man. That is not correct. Jesus is the Word made flesh, yes. But the Bible, the Scriptures, that's why I'm so glad it says Scripture here, so that you can't confuse it somehow into thinking it's just talking about Jesus or the Holy Spirit. No, it's talking about the Scriptures that you read out of the Bible. The scripture is profitable unto all these things that you may be a mature Christian. Without the word of God, you cannot mature. Without the word of God, you cannot be fully what you need to be. And you don't release the potential of the word of God unless you study it, pay attention to it, meditate in it, hear it, have it go into your spirit and speak it out of your mouth. It's a process, and it's a process that will work 
every time you put it to work. But you have to put it to work. You have to put it to work. Nobody else could do it. Your pastor can't do it for you. A teacher like Brother Copeland can't do it for you. Even books about the Bible won't do it for you. you got to study the Word, which is why you need to carry your Bible with you when you are you know, able at any time. You know, I carry, i got a Bible at work with me. If I'm on a break or I'm at lunch, I can pull it out and read it. You know, and it doesn't have to be paper anymore. It doesn't have to be a little, a little book anymore. It can be a computerized Bible. But read it, study it, meditate on it. It will be a blessing if you'll do that. Amen. Well, we're out of time. I'm keeping my eye on the time because I see that we're running out. But I tell you what, I want you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code is 2726. Uh, 27262. I'll get it. 27262. That's our regular mailing address. You can also write me at my email address. Of course, that is quicker and, and you can, it'll come to me much faster if you write me at drbill, Dr. Bill, at wfm.org. Go to our website, wfm.org. There's all kinds of articles there. There's teaching there. There's audio. There's video. All kinds of things that will bless you and will be a benefit to you to help you study and receive from the Word of God. Amen. Join us next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.